Good morning to you all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Please come and let's share the word of God. Jesus loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much. Please join and let's share the word of God. Join and let's share the word of God. Please, as soon as you join, I want you to do two things for me, as usual. I want you to do two things. The first thing is to share and invite somebody to join the broadcast or hear the word of God. The second thing is to like the video or just follow our page so that you don't miss any of the messages that God delivers through me. I'm an end-time prophet. End-time prophetess. I carry only the message of God. I tell the people what God wants them to hear, not what the people want them to hear. Hey, oh, baby, I forget to work on. I tell people what God wants them to hear, not what they want to hear. I hear a lot of people saying, you are so judgmental. I'm not so judgmental. I hear a lot of people say, who are you to condemn? I'm not condemning anybody. I hear people saying, is that how you preach? Yes, that is how I preach. I believe these are the questions uh, <laughs> that you've been asking. So I'm answering you straightforward. This is how I preach. This is how I preach. I don't preach to make you feel good. Because... The anger of God upon humanity will not make anybody feel good. How God is angry with us. <laughs> I speak to you the same way when God is having one-on-one -on -one with you. The same way he will rebuke you. That is the same way I speak to you. I'm here this morning with a different message. I wake up this morning with a different message. And I have to pass the message out before I go and do whatever I want to do within the day. The revelation God gave me today, it is today. This is the revelation I want to let you know. It's the message I want to deliver to you. I said I am an end-time prophet. End-time messenger. So I deliver messages as God has called me to deliver. I know truth is very, very bitter. Truth is very, very difficult for people to speak the truth face to face. Facing somebody and telling the person the exact thing is not easy. It's not easy at all. It's not easy. That is why a lot of you feel you see me as so judgmental. You see me as somebody that is straightforward, condemning people. I'm not condemning you. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what you're doing that God do not like. Okay, let's, let's go, let's go uh, straight to what I have for you today. Because I don't have enough time. I wake up with a revelation today. The Lord opened my eye. I found myself in a very big land. And the land is well cleared. They've withered the land. They have withered the land. And they have dug wells. They've dug wells. You know the well that we fetch water from? That well. The well is well dug. They have dug the wells. The well is dug. But there is no water inside. Empty wells. And each of the wells have the names on it. Each of the wells have names on it. Each of the wells have the founders standing beside it. Each of the wells have the, the founders, the general overseers, the papajiwo, the mamajiwo, standing beside it. But it's an empty well, a well without water. It's an empty well. This is what I saw today before I wake up. An empty well, a well without water. And the Lord made me understood that these wells are churches without salvation messages. Churches that are empty churches. Churches that do not have the salvation message. Churches that no longer preach salvation. Churches that no longer care about souls. Churches that no longer preach about repentance, purification, sanctification.
perfection, righteousness. These are the empty wells that we are seeing. It's a church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And when I wake up, the Lord led me to a scripture that a prophet, the same prophet, was warning people about a similar message. Because anytime God gives a message, God will lead you to a scripture. He will lead you to a Bible verse confirming what he gave you. Empty wells. Shepherds, wake up. Papa Jesus, wake up. Mama Jesus, wake up. Owners and overseers, general overseers, wake up. Because your wells are dried up. Some of the wells, it is full of dust. No water. No water. Some of the wells, people are coming with barrels to fetch water. There is no water in the well. No water. No water in the well. No water in the well. And the Lord took me to Ezekiel 34. I found a scripture similar to the revelation I had in the book of Ezekiel 34. Let me read it to you. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel 34. Please, as soon as you join, share the broadcast for me. Ezekiel 34, it said, the shepherd of Israel. He said, the Lord spoke to me. Ezekiel is speaking. Mortal man, he said, denounce the rulers of Israel. Prophesy to them and tell them that I, the sovereign Lord, say to them, you are doomed. You say to them, you are doomed, you shepherd of Israel. You take care of yourself, but you never tend the sheep. You drink the milk. Wear clothes made from the wool and kill and eat the finest sheep, but you never tend the sheep. You have not taken care of the weak ones. Heal those that are sick, bandage those that are hurt, brought back, brought back those that wandered off, or look for those that were lost. Instead, you treated them cruelly. Because the sheep had no shepherd, they, are, they were scattered and wild animals killed and eat them. So my sheep wandered all over the high hills and the mountains. They were scattered over the face of the earth and no one looked for them or tried to find them. Now you shepherd, listen to what I, the Lord, am telling you. As surely uh, as I am the living God, you had better listen to me. My sheep have been attacked by wild animals that killed and eat them because there were no shepherd. My shepherd did not try to find the sheep. They were taking care of themselves and not the shepherd. So listen to me, you shepherd. I, the sovereign Lord, declare that I am your enemy. I will take my sheep away from you and never again let you be my shepherd or their shepherd. Never again will I let you take care only of yourself. I will rescue my sheep from you and not let you eat them. That says the Lord. He said, I, the sovereign Lord, I tell you that I myself will look for my sheep and take care of them in the same way a shepherd take care of their sheep that were scattered and are brought together again. I will bring them back from all the places where they, uh, they were scattered on, on that dark, disastrous day. Hallelujah. This is a scripture that the Lord led me to. The Lord was speaking to shepherds. Men of God, today I came with a message that is straight, going straight to genuine men of God. Genuine men of God that are not taking good care of God people. That are not teaching people the way. Because you can take people to know God themselves. If you learn to teach the, the church to depend on God, they will never be running from one charlatan to the other. If you teach the people how the whole, how they can receive the Holy Spirit, how they can increase themselves, how they can live for God, for God to bless them, they will never be looking for miracle items. But instead, genuine shepherd cares about themselves rather than caring for the sheep. That is why the wells are empty. The word of God to feed the church members are not there. Because the rightful people to occupy the seat are not the ones that is being chosen. When you go to most of the churches, they use qualification to choose leaders instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to choose. When you go to the church of Pentecost, the message of Christ is out 
rest of the church today because those that are spirit filled are outside the tent and those that do not have the spirit but have qualification, have identification, have money, have connection are the ones that are called leaders. Oh yes. Yes. When you go to church of Methodists, they don't allow people. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to choose. So they will use qualification. The one that have gone to school, the one that have been able to, the one that is having certificate, the one that have completed degree, PhD, this, this. Which of the apostles? Which of the apostles in the Bible was educated? Which of them? Apart from Apostle Paul, I'm talking about the fishermen that Jesus chose. Which of them? The reason why today the Holy Spirit has departed from our churches, that our wells are empty, is because we make wrong choice. We do not give the Holy Spirit a chance to choose. We do not allow the Holy Spirit to choose. We do not use the one that God loves, the one God chose. We don't like it. We want the one that has money. When you go to the church of Pentecost today and you have money, you get a post. You get post. They should tell me it's a lie. They should tell me. James McKeon is angry with a lot of you. The soul of James McKeon, wherever he is, is crying against a lot of you because of what you're doing. The doctrine that was adopted, the doctrine that Jesus gave to James McKeon to raise the foundation, to build the foundation of Church of Pentecost is out. Now, no longer Pentecostal churches no longer cover their head. It is okay. To go to church anyhow. But as you were growing. Me. I was raised from the church of Pentecost. You cannot go to church with any dress. Mm -mm. You cannot go to church with your head uncovered. But now they are saying all those things were a cake. All these things were a cake. That is why now we are entertaining sexuality and nudity in churches. Nudity. You meet a lady from the church of Pentecost. Anglican, Presbyterian church. Well dressed like a prostitute. On the way to work. And she will tell you I went to church. And you ask yourself which church? Which church? Our wells are empty. I was showing with you the revelation that the Lord took me to. The church of Methodists. My mother was a caretaker. So as soon as I wake up, I told her, Mama, I went to where you used to hold the church, where you were a leader. I went there. I went there. The church is full of dust. Dust everywhere. Dust everywhere. Dust everywhere. Many of you, your wells, there is water inside. Your barrels, there is water full of barrels, but under that barrel is full of dust. God wants you to consecrate. God wants you to what? Consecrate. God wants you to hear this message and, and make corrections. Hear this message and, and make corrections because elders, apostles, one day you will die. The day you will die and meet God, God will ask you, why did you use your power to make a choice instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to choose? When you start telling them the truth, they will say, you are so judgmental. Who are you to condemn? I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you the mind of God. Because God is going to use some of us as a threshing machine to thresh you people. For you to become a grain instead of you becoming a chaff in the body of Christ. Most of you are chaffs. And you know no chaff can enter into the kingdom of God. That chaff will be burned. It is only the grain that will have, that will have a portion in, in the kingdom of God. Don't be a chaff. Never be a chaff. God spoke to Hosea. Hosea chapter 8 verse 4. Hosea chapter 8, the verse number 4. He said, my, poop, my people choose kings. My people, they choose kings, but they did it on their own. They choose leaders, they do it on their own. The leaders of Church of Pentecost, they choose apostles, they do it on their own. The leaders of Anglican, they choose leaders, they do it on their own. One man churches. Nowadays, the new Pentecostal churches, they choose leaders based on themselves. No Holy Spirit. So you see a leader that is a, a, rap, a rapist. You see a leader, overseer, 
managing that church that is a rapist, that is raping and defiling, sleeping with people's wives, sleeping with young, young children, that is a leader in the church because we choose on our own. He said, my people choose kings, but they did it on their own. They appoint leaders, but without my approval. Which of the leaders in Pentecost was the Holy Spirit's approval? Which of them? Which of the leaders in the church of Methodists today is the Holy Spirit approver? If they were Holy Spirit approver, the Spirit of God will speak through that person to rebuke the church. But because they were chosen by man, if you rise to rebuke them, they will cast you out of the church. They will drive you away like a thief. That is why we have a lot of leaders that do not fear God. A lot of leaders that do not know God. How can a whole leader like that he would mills? How can that he would mills? A whole leader, a whole head like that he would mills sit or stand in front of God Almighty that created him. And say, and say, and as I quote, word to word, he said, if in God, if in God, he accepts polygamy. Because when God created animal, he did not give one wife to any animal. And I want to prove to that he was males that I want to ask him this question. That which of the animals in the animal kingdom, the God Almighty said, I created a lion, I created an ant, I created elephant in my own image and likeness. If you are referring human to animals, if you are referring that God created a lion and the female lion, all the male lions, can mate with it. And there is nothing wrong. So God support polygamy. I want to ask you this question. That which of the animals in the Bible. Which of the animals. The God Almighty said. I created this animal. In my own image and likeness. Not None of the animals. God said I created man. In my own image and likeness. Not animal. So animals can practice polygamy. Polyandry. Whatever they practice. Human beings cannot practice. Human beings cannot practice. Chris, your church, that you are males. There are like things that we are, hearing, we are hearing about you. It's against the will of God. It's against it. I know nobody can tell you because if your associate pastors, your junior pastors, anybody that will try to preach the truth, you rebuke the person, disgrace the person. That is what today God said I should warn you. Yes. Choose leaders that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Your wells, I saw you, that is why I'm mentioning your name. Your well is empty. You have different branches all over the world, but there is no water. I tell you the mind of God as it is. Woe unto me if I lie. Woe unto me if I lie. If I lie, woe unto me. Your wells, there is no word of God. There is no word of God. Enough of the prosperity. Enough. Of God is going to visit you. I know God will visit people. He says, seek ye the kingdom of righteousness first. And all other things shall be given unto you. Seek ye the kingdom of righteousness. If you have not seeked that kingdom, you can never get all other things. Let's tell the people the truth. Let us lead the people to righteousness. Let us show them the way out. God told Moses to tell the Israels, I, the Lord your God, I am holy. So you also, you must be holy. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Take away carnality from churches. Take away worldliness from churches. Take away fashion. Fashion is not part of Christianity. Fashion is not part of Christianity. What you, we are paving way for it to thrive gradually, gradually into the Christian, Christian doctrine. And it's not godly doctrine. It is not of God. It is never of God. Never of God. Let's tell people they spare, they spare. Call a spare, they spare. Tell the truth. Run away from sins. Judgment of God is coming. Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's coming to judge our bishops. It doesn't matter whether you have big belly or small belly. God is coming to judge cardinals. It doesn't matter whether you have mansion or you don't have mansion. God is coming to judge presiding elders. God is coming to judge archbishops. God is coming to judge prophets and prophetess. God is coming to judge evangelists that use the name of God to beg money. You stand on the roadside, preach 15 minutes, beg money for 35 hours. You beg money for 18 hours. 
You just preach two hours and we stand there and beg money for 14 hours. It is not an abomination for a man of God to enter into business. Listen to me. It's not a crime for a woman of God to enter into business. Do the work of God and be in business. In order not to, for you to become a thief. In order for you not to become a criminal in the body of Christ. In order not for you to become a fallacy that preaches but do not practice it. Enter into business. Go and preach for six hours. After six hours, go and find something to do. It is not against God. In order to meet your basic necessities, in order to be able to pay your bills, in order to be able to enroll your children in schools, rather than standing on the roadside, give and God will bless you. Give and God will bless me. I do so to such people. I will never give you. And wise people will never give you. Go and preach. Come and sell water. Go and sell strippers. Go and sell shoes. Through that, God will raise kingdom finances to come to your aid. A time will come. You will not, you will not preach and ask for money again. Financial door will be opened unto you by God himself. But we say no. We don't want the kingdom of righteousness. We want money first. We don't want the kingdom of righteousness. We want money first. Me, I don't need motivational messages again. Because of what I've used this eye to see. I don't want motiv motivation. Don't motivate me. Because I've seen that whatever that man gets on earth, when they are going, they don't go with it. I've seen that all is what? Vanity. All is what? Vanity. Vanity upon vanity. Vanity. All is vanity. One day I was going somewhere. Where I was going, I had an appointment with somebody. So I was going to meet that person. It was the first time I was going to meet that person. I was seated in a car. And a voice came. Who watches the watchman? Me, that is how I hear from God. Do not everything in dream. As I'm seated here, I can hear the voice. Who watches the watchman? That is the voice that came. Who watches the watchman? Who watches the watchman? You ask yourself, who watches the watchman? God to Ezekiel, I have said to this day, a watchman over my people. I have said to this day, man of God, a watchman over my people. Who watches you? Who watches you? Who preaches you? You preach people, but who preaches to you? You warn people, who warns you? You correct people, who correct you? Because you're a human being. As far as you're a human being, you can err. As far as you're a human being, you can sin. As far as you're a human being, you can slip and fall. Who watches over you? Who watches over you? One day the Lord was telling me, a lot of, a lot of shepherds, a lot of men and women of God, they are like signboard. They are leading a lot of people to eternity, but they themselves, they will never go there. They are like what? Signboard. Signboard. It's a sign. People, come to Jesus. The kingdom of God is at hand. You prostitute. Stop prostituting. You this. Stop it. But they themselves, they will never enter. A lot of you are booking men. You book the car. You load the car. The people who enter paradise will not go there. You will not enter there because your deeds do not qualify you. God is not striking you down because you are a signboard to God. God has ordained you as a signboard. When he finished, you are a ladder. People are listening to your messages to cry to eternity. They will listen to the message to go to where God wants them to be. By you yourself, you will never go there. You will never go there. That is why you, you scream to God at the final day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I use your name to heal? Didn't I use your name to cast out demons? Didn't I use your name to let the one that is blind to see? And he will tell me, he will tell you, depart from me. I know you not. You worker of iniquity. Why? Because you are a signboard now. You preach salvation. You preach righteousness. You go home and you hold the neck of your wife. 
when you are doing something and your wife is correcting you, as a man of God, ordained by God, genuine shepherd, that God has called you, you are slipping gradually, gradually. You are defiling yourself. Your wife has seen that that lady that came to the church, that is drawing closer to you, will, will make you fall, will bring shame upon you and the family. Your wife is drawing you closer, drawing your attention to the danger and the shame you want to bring upon the life of her and the church. And the, and, the, and the name of God and you hold the neck of your wife and say how dare you who gave you the audacity to rebuke me then you come and stand in front of the church and say if you are a man and you lift your hand on your woman you are touching what God has created God have mercy upon you yourself you see how your guilty conscience makes you feel guilty after preaching you see how you feel so bad when you sit down and analyze the message that God delivered through you as a man of God. You see how you feel so bad. You feel bad, my dear brother, because you are a vessel God is using you. You are a ladder. People through your messages of crime and get salvation by you yourself. After they finish crime, God will throw the ladder into the fire where you be granting your, your teeth, where you be crying, calling the name of God, but God will not answer you hear the word of God don't be an empty well if you are an evangelist you cannot go to the wayside go to the market space evangelize finish and come and, come and fornicate all of us has been there before all of us we have done it but now we are seeing light now we will never go to that mess again because that time we thought we can preach at the wayside preach in churches preach in schools preach in so many places and return back into our vomit no if god have not chastised you if god have not warned you if you are doing that count yourself among the signboard Count yourself among the signboard. There is something in you that God wants you to deliver to the people. After that, he's not going to use you for anything. If you don't repent. If you don't repent. If you don't repent. Go to churches. Preach. Move from nation to nation. Preach. Move from churches to churches, preach. Move from state to state, preach. And return back to your mess. Come back to your ignorant. Come back to the dirty things that you are doing. Don't repent. God sees you as one of the signboards. And when he finishes using you to show his people his way, he will throw you into the fire that do not stop burning. The unstoppable fire. That is where you find yourself. That is how you find yourself. Empty wells. No salvation messages. No salvation. Enough, man of God. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. If no greediness, you will not still be dumped, duping the church members. You have your house. You have your cars. You build your church. You have different branches in so many areas. What else? What else do you want? What else do you want? You want to get two different local flights. You have to. You want to get a, a, a houses in Italy, houses in Australia, houses in America. Oh God, oh God! The day you will die, you will not go and carry the house that you have in America. You will not get time to go and check the house you have in Australia. The day you will die, you will not get the opportunity to even go and lock the house you have. In the green land, you will not have it. You will not have it. Your money, that, the money that you've stolen from your church, the money you've stolen from your church, that you are keeping it in a bank in America, the day God will suffocate you, the day God will take the breath from your nostril, you will not get access to that account. You will not get access to that account. Enough. You have duped them. Enough. You've got in schools, you've got in cars, you've got in local fright, you've got in money in your account. Enough. Repent. Repent. Be like Benny High. Benny High, he has started repenting. You think he's a fool. He doesn't want to die and go to hell. He has started repenting. That is why you see him confessing. You see him confessing of the prosperity messages that he used to do you. You see him confessing. It's better you also draw closer to God. It's better you come to your senses, man of God. God called you. 
It's not that you don't have the call of God. God called you. The Lord gave me a revelation about one one of these. Uh, 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 pray, pray, how do how do you reveal call them? One of these 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 men that lead prayers on online. All of them, their head is covered with darkness. 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 Not that they did not have the call of God. They were called. They were called. But because, because of money, influence, connection, they subdue. They went to put their head and the mammon. They put their head and the mammon. They surrender to mammon. For mammon to give them the exposure, give them the voice, give them the platforms so that they can be traveling around, traveling to Europe, going to USA, Canada, just to do people, scam people. Because anywhere they go, they will share everything. Anywhere they go, they will not preach the gospel. They will not preach the undiluted message of God that changes people, that transforms the mind of a sinner, that will tell the drug addict, move from it, or else you die and go to hell. The message that will tell people that you have come to Europe, there are a lot of opportunities. You cannot be sleeping with old women to get money. You can work. They will not go and preach that message. They will go with the prosperity message. After that, they start from vulnerable people that walk in the snow to work for 16 hours before they get 2,000 pounds. Vulnerable people that walk in the snow as a single mother leaving their children in the house. They don't even know what happened to their children when they go to work. They will take everything. Go and give to them. I start from them. Come and buy cars in Nigeria. Buy cars in Ghana. Buy cars in Kenya. Buy a lot of things in South Africa. Be boasting. And they'll be boasting for you to know that if you serve God, you have to prosper. If you serve God and you don't prosper, that means you are not sowing seed. Sowing seed does not make anybody prosper. Sowing seed does not make anybody prosper. It is your hand work that God will bless. If you are selling, God will increase your customers. You get income from your handwork. Come and sow 100 and get 1 million. God is not a chacha man. He's not a lotto dealer. God does not deal with usury because that thing is usury. And according to Psalm 15 verse 5, usury is against the, the will of God. Lottery is against the will of God. Lottery is against God. Psalm 15. Psalm 15 verse 3. Let me read a scripture to you. Psalm 15 verse 3. Let me read a scripture to you. Keep sharing the broadcast. I'm not going to keep long. Keep sharing the broadcast for me. Psalm 15. The verse number 3. <coughs> Let me read from 1. Psalm 15. It says, Lord, who may enter your temple? Lord, who may enter your temple? Who may worship on Zion your sacred hill? Those who obey God in everything and always do what is right, whose words are true and sincere, and who do not slander others, they do not do wrong to their friends, nor spend rumors about their spread rumors about their friends. They despise those who God rejects, but only who those who obey the, the Lord. They always do what they promise, no matter how much it may cost. They make loans without charging interest and cannot be bribed to testify against the innocent. When we talk about people who qualify to enter into the holy sanctuary of the God Almighty, the ancient God of Abraham, the God of truth and justice, people that do not slander in their ways. They do not slander. They are so truthful. They are so truthful, honest. Truthful and honest. These people qualify to be called children of God, men of God, women of God. Is there anybody that is shouting somewhere, can I prophesy? And you get gullible people that have paid to say prophesy. Where in the Bible? Did you hear Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, Obadiah, Nahum, screaming, can I prophesy? And you hear somebody with frog in the throat behind the person saying prophesy. Where in the Bible? 
Where in the scripture? It is something that we've adopted just to make scamming so easier and so sweet and so convenient. We make scamming so sweet and so convenient. Can I prophesy? Somebody that do not slander in his words. Somebody that do not hate evil. That do not call evil good and call good evil. Me, I can't call evil good. And I cannot call good evil. I will tell you as it is. That is why a lot of you see me as so judgmental. I'm not judgmental, I'm straightforward. I'm a straightforward person. Because I don't know when the years that I will spend on earth that I should start lying. I don't know how, how long I will live on earth that I should start lying. I don't know how much I will be able to take to my grave when I die that I should scam people to get money. How what do I gain when I ride cars? What do I gain when people know that I'm rich? What do I gain when people know that I own this luxurious mansion? What do I gain? They will only pay me homage. They will only respect me. They will only fear me. But how do God see me? How do God see me? How do God see you? How do God know you? A lot of you claim you know God. Ask yourself, do God know you? I know the president of Nigeria because I've seen him uttering his speech. But does the president of Nigeria know me? You know the president of Ghana. Does the president of Ghana know you? That is the question. I know God. I'm a child of God. Ask yourself, do God know you? Does he know you? Has he written your name in the book of the children? Is your name in that book? Is your name in that book? If you are a genuine man of God here and you only have three members, please teach them the truth. It's better you have three congregations. It's better you enter paradise with three congregations rather than having millions of viewers that none of them knows God or God knows none of them. Many of you, your church is a shrine, a well-decorated shrine in the sight of God. Your church is not a church. Most of you, your church is the den of prostitute. Because the people that come in your church, none of them is born again. None of them have connection with God. None of them know God. None of them don't know God. The spirit of God is not in any of them. It is only lies. They come there because they get new clothes, new shoes, expensive bags. They don't know anywhere. They don't have anywhere to go and exhibit it rather than bringing it to your place that you call church. Your world, the greater shrine that you call a church to come and exhibit to come and be a stamping block to poor people, people that do not have, they will come there and they'll be looking down on people that do not have money to buy Gucci. They'll be looking down on people that, that do not come to church with car. They don't come with their own car. They'll be looking down upon people. You see them cross-checking. Their eyes will be going around under the seat, checking the shoes that people are wearing, checking the bags, checking the dress they wear. Because they think the church is a platform of exhibiting different styles. As they did the fashion show. The fashion show. No. No. That is not the praise. That is not. That is not. That is not. Jesus said something. In the book of John chapter 9. Verse 23. He said, if anybody wants to follow me. Let the person deny themselves and carry the cross. Deny the world. Denying the world is difficult for many Christians. Denying the world. That is how you hear a, a self-acclaimed Christian sister telling you, how dare you? How dare you preach against preaching? How dare you preach against makers? How dare you preach against women? How dare you? When we preach our skin, when we die, is the skin not going to rot? Is it not the soul that will appear before God? Naive, ignorant. You've forgotten that the Bible says, whatsoever that you use this body to do, you will account for it on the day of judgment. 
If this body will rot, and this body will not take you to hell, why do you eat? And you expect your soul to be strong. <laughs> you eat oh. Or you sit here as I'm sitting here. It is your body that is receiving the message. But rather it is your soul that will get conviction. For you to get the dream of you washing your clothes. You washing your shoes. You cleaning your house. After listening to this message. All of you that will listen to this message. From a genuine heart. A broken heart. You see yourself cleaning your room. You see yourself washing your clothes. You see yourself after listening to this message. Can't go and sleep and come and tell me it's a lie. Every time a preacher visits you, a messenger of God visits you, you hear a message from a messenger of God. You go and sleep and you don't dream of seeing yourself washing your clothes, cleaning your family house, cleaning your home, cleaning your room. That messenger wasn't sent by God. That messenger wasn't sent by God. I'm the kind of person that I don't care about crowd. I care about the people that are ready to draw closer to God. I care about the few souls that I will enter into eternity with them. The book of Luke chapter 10, verse number 17 to 20. Jesus Christ sent his disciples. There were 72 men. 72 men that Jesus sent to them. Luke chapter number 17. Let me read the scripture to you now. I want you to get it. Luke 17. Verse number, Luke 10, 17 to 20. It said that 72 men came back in great joy. He sent 72 men. They when they were able to heal. When they lift their hands, demons should be running. When they lift their hands, sickness will disappear. When they lift their hands, blind person will see. The dumb will begin to speak. The, the disabled will, will begin to walk. The weak person will gain strength. So they return to Jesus Christ with joy, with testimony. Coming to testify to Jesus. Hear what Jesus told them. He said the 72 men came in great joy. Said... Lord, they said, if the demons obeyed us, when we gave them a command in your name. <laughs> Verse 18. He said, Jesus answered them. He said, I saw Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. I saw Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. Listen, I have given you authority so that you can walk on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. But don't be glad. Because the evil spirit obey you, but rather be glad because your names are written in heaven. Don't be glad that you have a lot of views, a lot of followers, a lot of church members, but be glad you and your church members' names are written in heaven. That is our joy. Jesus said we shouldn't celebrate in testimony. The day I discovered the scripture, I stopped posting testimonies. The day I discovered the scripture, I stopped posting testimonies. Barring women that are giving birth that I was posting, I pray for them, they get the seed, they carry baby and they'll give birth and they'll be testifying. Pregnant women that doctors said they will, they will take them through operation. That I prayed for them at the hospital that they gave birth through natural birth. At first, I was testifying. I was sharing the day the Lord led me to this scripture. I stopped sharing testimonies. I stopped sharing testimonies because He said we shouldn't rejoice that demons. Hear our voice and they run away. But we should be re we should rejoice that our name is being written in the book of life. Don't 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 celebrate when you see people they will they will, they will pay this Pakistan they and their Pakistan views. <laughs> They are their Pakistan viewers. They will go and pay 300, 400 to Pakistan people. And they will, they will, they will fill their life. When they are, they are online, you see 10K, 15K, 20K. And they will screenshot it. They will circle it on their page. Meaning that they are genuine man of God. My brother, stop deceiving yourself. My sister, stop deceiving yourself. Don't be a signboard. That people will read you to find the way to eternity. Where you yourself you will not enter. 
Don't be a cookman that will be loading the cars in the station. People will get passengers will get car to their destination, but you yourself will not go there. Don't be a false shepherd. Don't be a shepherd that God will tell you depart from me. I know you not. You worker of iniquity. Depart from me. I know you not. You worker of iniquity. Don't let God speak this word to you. Repent. In your secret place, ask yourself, I'm a man of God. The whole people know that I'm a man of God. I do miracles. By the lifting of my hands, demons disappear. They scream and go. But I myself, do I have personal relationship with God? Jesus told the people, the scribes and the Pharisees have seated on the seat of Moses. So whatever they tell you to do, do. But their works do not do. Do not do what they do. Because the fallacies, the nature or the character of the fallacies is the same spirit possessing a lot of men of God and women of God today. I'm not talking about false men of God. I'm talking about genuine men and women of God. Genuine men and women of God. Who watches the watchman? Who watches the watchman? Who cancels the counselor? Who rebukes them? Who tells them the mind of God? Who? Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3 to 6. Ezekiel chapter 2. The verse number 3 to 6. It says, mortal man, I'm sending you to the people of Israel. <laughs> they have rebelled and turned against me. And I still rebels. Just as their ancestors, just as the fallacies, just as the fallacies, they have rebelled. We keep, we hold the Bible, we go to church, we go there because every Sunday we know the amount that we will take to the bank. That is why we go there. We go to that world, the greatest shrine, world garnish shrine that we call temple. We go there because we know gullible people will always come to the market. We know gullible peoples will always come to the market. That is why we go there. We are saying we know we are not working for God. Man of God, put your hand on your chest and ask you, are you a well full of water or you are an, an empty well? There is a song in Ghanaian language. Osimamineyebura Obetumiasemusio Amawana Sukomti won. Sie sie me. I will I will explain it to you. Me nyami sie sie me. Sie sie me. Ho ho kron kron sie sie me. Mamine bura. Let me be that well. The Lord you can fetch water for those that are thirsty. That is the meaning of the song. Mamine bura. I don't want to be an empty well. Lord, let me be that well that you can fetch water for the church of Pentecost. Let me be that well that you can fetch water for the Anglican people that are under me. Let me be that well that you can fetch water for the people that you've gathered under me. Let me be that well. Ask yourself, are you an empty well or you are full of water? Is your water clean or dirty? Many of you know that you don't have water. Know that you don't preach salvation. Know that your church, there is no salvational message. There is salvational message. Yes, so the water is dirty. You that is preaching, you don't even apply what you preach. You that is preaching, you don't apply what you preach. If you apply what you preach, like you will never preach against polygamy. And keep another woman in the same church. That your wife know you are having something to do with this woman. Your wife will confront you. And you tell your wife. You, you shut up. If anybody hear of this. And the church go down. You are cursed. Stop frightening that woman. Because that woman is your angel. 
That woman is the sieve that is sieving you. That woman is the axe that is cutting away every thorn around you. Because a lot of you, you are surrounded with weeds. A lot of you, you are surrounded with thorns. Thorns have, have surrounded your, your, your work with God. Thorns, weeds. The parable of the sower. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus made a parable. He said a sower went out to sow. When he sowed, after he after sowing and he went to sleep, the enemy came and sowed tongues. Jesus called you as a genuine man of God. Jesus called you as a genuine woman of God. The enemy have come to sow tongues, and the tongue that is in you is last. So everything is kept. A genuine man of God, you last for it. You are not fake. You are a genuine woman of God, but the enemy has drawn Christ at you to sow the thorn of lust. People come to you, pray for them, and you sleep with them. May God deliver us all. May God show us mercy. A lady will come to you with marital problem. You will cancel that married woman, and at the end, genuine man of God, you go around sleeping with her. An orphan will come to you as a father, as a representative of Christ. Oh, I want to father you. I know you don't have a father. You pay the school fees. As soon as the girl completes senior high school, you start sleeping with her. You sleep with her and you impregnate her. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you are called to do? No. Is that what Jesus wants us to do? No. Is that what the Bible questions us to do? No. This is not we are. This is not. It's the thorn, thorn, thorn. The thorn. The enemy have planted thorn. Many of you, your thorn is money conscious. You are a genuine man of God. You used to preach salvation, but because you were greedy to get cars, that is why they they lured you with the money. And now you've moved from the spiritual father that was a genuine man of God to a spiritual father that is a charlatan, jackal. I will teach you how to steal, teach you how to manipulate. They will write script for you, teach you because they have the platform. They will invite you, write church members' programs for you behind the door, and you come and stand and prophesy. I see somebody from Malawi, somebody from Malawi. You are here with this program. How did you enter this? How did you end in this way? How? How? Return back. He said, remember the height from which you have fallen. And do the things that you used to do. Remember your first love, man of God. Remember your first love. Where you used to gather the youth to teach them the ways of God. Where you used to gather people on path. Pray with them to receive Holy Spirit. Where you used to gather people to go and evangelize. Remember the height from which you are falling. How did you end as a, as, a, as a prophet? Somebody that is a preacher. Somebody that was called into a, a, to preach. How did you? Now you are with a name that people cannot even mention. A blue, 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 blue. I don't know where you get your names. I don't know. Name that people cannot even mention. You've diverted from your calling. You've left off God I've called you to do because of money. Because of hardship. Let me tell you, to be a genuine man or a genuine woman of God is not bread and butter. It's not bread and butter. Because the kingdom of darkness wants to use money to win you. You go through hardship. You go through difficulties. You wake up and what to eat will be difficult. You wake up and what to wear it will be difficult. So when you see a lot of us repeating clothes, stop saying, ah, every day you've been repeating clothes, repeating. I will never join them. That will be changing clothes every day. I don't need it. I would rather repeat the clothes. I would rather repeat shoes. I would rather repeat bags. So that my name can fit into the book of life. Because the book of life is not a big space. It's a small space. So if I carry a lot of worldly things on me. If I carry a lot of load. I cannot fit there. The narrow way is not a big road. If you have a lot of luggage, you cannot pass on that way. 
You can't pass it. That is so you must be an, somebody that have denied everything. He said, if anybody wants to follow me, if anybody wants to be my servant, if, if anybody wants to be a representative of Christ, if anybody wants to be a disciple of Christ, let the person deny themselves and carry the cross and follow me daily. Deny yourself. Deny the world. Deny everything in it. Carry the cross. When we talk about denying, Deny the world doesn't mean. Nowadays, a lot of false teachers have made it look like when they say deny the world means somebody that do not wear earring, somebody that do not put on a necklace, somebody that do not wear watch. My brothers and sisters, deny yourself is not this. Deny your heart. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. It says, rent your heart, not your garment. Rent your heart. Inside the heart. Lies, bitterness. Inside the heart, lies unforgiving. Inside the heart, lies murdering, killing. It comes from the heart. Rent that heart. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Don't be money conscious. Many men of God have been so money conscious to the extent that you see them fighting in public over offering. There was one of our missionaries, our late um, Rehan Bonki. He came to Ghana. <laughs> Something happened between pastors. I was young that time. But because I witnessed with my eye, I can testify what happened. When evangelist or apostle Bonki came to Ghana, he mounted a very big platform. And it wasn't a small crusade. After preaching the gospel, a lot of healing and deliverance took place. And this man was so selfless to the extent that he did not go with a penny of the offering. The offering they gave, the members gave, he gave it to the priest, the, the members, leaders of churches that came there. And come and see how pastors were fighting over money. One would give another one slap. And one would roll from top and come down. Hey! It was like a boxing field because of money. The one that came and preached, he did not take penny. Penny of the offering. That is how genuine men of God are. That is how selfless men. So selfless, so meek, down to earth. May his soul rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace. Yes, we talk about the legacy that people have lived on earth. We talk about the late. The late. The, the late uh, 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 patriarch, men and women of God. We can talk of Catherine Coleman. When we talk about Catherine Coleman, every woman in this day, this dispensation wants to carry Catherine Coleman's anointing. But when you talk about your late pastor, you want to fight us. We feel comfortable to talk about Ezekiel. He was a senior prophet. Jeremiah was a senior prophet. We talk about that they are all late. Isaiah was a senior prophet. We feel comfortable to talk about senior prophet, late senior prophet. That serve God. Why don't you want us to talk about your prophet these days? When they die. You don't want us to call their name. Because a lot of you in your heart. And in your, your conscience. When we mention their names. You start thinking. That we are going to talk about. What you know about them. Maybe even we as we don't know about them. We don't know about them. We do not know about them. Yes, good legacy it leaves. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. <coughs> Revelation 2, 5. It said, Think how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins. And do what you did at first. If you don't turn from your sins, 
I will come to you and take your lampstand from its place. I will come and take the lampstand from its place. The height from which you have fallen. Remember the first day, Apostle, God General. Ah. Ah. The day you book a hotel with a church member. Remember the height from which you fall. Don't go there again. Bury your head in shame. And cry to God the Lord. I know I have sinned. And if taking your lampstand from me, help me, remember me again. Remember me again. I have fallen as a minister of God. Many of you, it is temptation. Oh. It is temptation. They will bring the woman to tempt you. Because they knew that when you were in the world, your weakness was woman. Many of you, when you were in the world before you received the call of God or before you became born again, your weakness was smoking. The enemy know your weakness. The devil know your weakness. That is why most of the time, they draw closer to you using your weak point. They know your weakness is woman. Fair woman. Dark skinned woman. So every day they'll bring such women around you. They'll bring such women around you. Man of God, you are falling. Rise up. Rise up. You have fallen. That is why you are throwing away your wife. The wife that you start the ministry with. Ah. The one that you use to, to, to go evangelism with. The woman you started from a scratch with. When you were starting the ministry from a scratch, from nowhere, that woman wasn't a witch. She wasn't Jezebel. Now that you see beautiful women coming into the ministry, your woman is a witch now. She's a Jezebel. You are falling for divorce. You are falling for divorce. You are in a, a process of divorcing your wife, your first wife. Because you've seen a church member that can give much. Because you've seen a church member with big breasts. Because you've seen a church member with dry bone belly. Then you think you can go to programs with because she's sexy. We don't need sexy in the kingdom of God. Because God has made every woman sexy in his own eyes. It is true that have errors with us. It is true that see that we have big eyes. Big no, so we don't qualify you. God don't see that. It is so that see that we have flat bottles. It is so that you, you see that we have big belly, big uh, fluttered belly. So we should go under surgery. We should go under knife. Or God, if our belly is big, so we should go under a knife. You also, your belly is big, your head is big. Go under the knife. Reduce the size of that your big coconut that you call your head. Enough of abusing women. Enough. Because she's a woman of God. She can't speak. She cannot say a word. She cannot make, she can't say faith. Because when she says faith, the church will go down. And everybody will be calling her name. Because she doesn't want to be a stumbling block to many people in the church. She's breathing something that is poisonous every day. Man of God, I say remember the height from which you have fallen. Today, God said, go and speak to the empty wells. Speak to the empty wells. Your wells have been empty for a very long time. A square time you filled it with clean water. No dirty water. Many of you, your portion is so weedy. Begin to weed. Begin to weed. Weed in your farm. Your farm is weedy. It is bushy. Your farm is the church member's so. Let me explain. A lot of you that God has been speaking to you in parables that you do not understand as a man of God. You see your farm. Your farm that you, you've grown plantain, coconut, yam, different kinds of crops, different kinds of vegetables. And the place is so bushy. And you wake up from that dream. God is telling you, go and preach repentance. Go and tell the people to craze themselves. Go and weed. Weed the other bushes. Leave only the good plants, the good plants that can bear fruit for God. Leave only that plant. 
all the tongues with it. With it. With it. With it off. Every man of God that you don't see yourself with him. That you see, you see, after preaching a sermon, after preaching a message, you will not get a dream. That you've withered a very big portion. Any man of God that you not see that, your messages are diluted. Assess the messages. Assess the water that you give to your people. The water may be dirty. That is why it cannot wash them. Because you cannot use the dirty water to clean a dirty person. You cannot use the dirty water. To wash dead from somebody, you must use clean water. That is why we take people through baptism. To wash them. Cleanse them. With your church. Your church is dirty. It's all about a big congregation. Me, my church carry, I have a, I have built a church of a, 5,000, a, a, a church that can take 5,000 congregations. An auditorium that can take 50,000. You think this is what God wants? This is not what God wants. What God wants is the number of souls that you've been able to draw them close to God. The number of people that you've been able to warn for Jesus. How many souls have you won? I've been in, I've been preaching for 35 years. I started preaching at age 12. How many souls have you won? What matters most is the number of souls that you've taken to the kingdom of God. How many souls have you been able to depopulate from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light? How many of them? Ask yourself this question. As a man of God, before you seek to boast, ask yourself, how many people have been saved through your message? How many people have been saved through your message? How many people get irritated, get angry, get so bitter when you start preaching? Any messages that do not make people get angry at you, it's a diluted message. When you preach the truth, you see the demon in them. They feel like tearing you down because truth hurts a lot. Truth hurts. It will hurt them. But when they go and sleep, their soul will begin to revise on that word that they heard. That word they heard. That word. Your messages always make people feel comfortable. Comfortable. That is why you have all these things in churches. Somebody told me, what if the person uh, had a tattoo on and now it's a born again? I had a tattoo on before I knew Christ. Now I'm born again. What am I to do? Those that did that tattoo for you, they are the people that wipe away tattoo. The people that do tattoo, they are the same people that clean tattoo. If you, if you claim you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will direct you to go and wash it. Because those that do tattoo, they are capable of cleaning tattoos. So using excuses, excuses, if, if, it, if you don't have money to go and clean it, we don't showcase it. We no longer advertise it. We do not go and stand on the pulpit of God. Wear clothes that will vividly show that we have tattooed. What is the message you are passing out? They should learn from it and go and tattoo their body. Let me show you a typical example. One of our members, one of our mother, my mother's in UK. One of his son, he was so into the things of the world. So God through me brought him to Christ. He was one of the people that God led me to take them from drugs and all these things to Christ. And when he became born again, he had all a big tattoo drawn here. He used to live with us here in this house before he went back to the moon. And you know, one day, I wake up and I saw the lioness children in my home. Lioness children, they started using pen, drawing tattoos on their thighs, drawing tattoos on their hands. I went to town, I came home. Hey, what is this? They said, we saw the tattoo. It's very nice. You want to, you want to learn it. You see, oh, 
You will say that, oh, I'm born again. Now I was in the world that I did tattoo. Now I'm in Christ. By you advertising it, you don't know the weaker ones among you. They will go and also do the tattoo because they seen a pastor with tattoo showcasing it on the altar. He doesn't speak against it. He doesn't preach against it. They see the woman with tattoo, the prophetess with tattoo, a lady reverend with tattoo. Nobody preach against it. So they think it is normal to do tattoo. Meanwhile, God has warned us in Leviticus that we should not draw our body. We should not tattoo our body. It's against God. So if you have become born again, if you have received God, you've received Holy Spirit into your life, find a way. If, it, if you cannot delete it, find a way of covering it. Find a way of hiding it. So that it will not be like you are advertising it. Why do people hate vendors? Why do they use celebrities' head to advertise different kinds of ways? Why do they pay celebrities huge amount of money to use their product on their skin? The meaning being that because they are public figure, when people see them looking beautiful, definitely they will ask, where did you get this wigs from? Where did you buy it? Can I get the link? Can I get the supplier? Can I get uh, contact of the producer? That is why they use celebrities. They endorse them. They sign an ambassadorial deal with them so that they'll be an ambassador of their product. So if you are an ambassador of the kingdom of life, why should you advertise something that belongs to a different kingdom? Because tattoo is not a product of the kingdom of light. Tattoo is not a product of the kingdom of light. It's a product of the kingdom of darkness. And this is the red truth that people don't, they cannot swallow it. They don't want to hear it. It's not a product of in our kingdom. It's not a product. So you learn how to promote the kingdom of light, the things of God. When was the last time you wrote John 3.16 on your forehead and you walk around with it? When was the last time? You pasted on a billboard and you were going showing it to people. Jesus is coming soon. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. When was the last time you did that? But you help promote the things of the devil. That is why you see prophetess, women of God with nails, they are advertising that thing for the kingdom of darkness. They belong to that kingdom because I belong to the kingdom of light. That is why I advertise for light. I promote the kingdom of light. I don't promote anything that is of the kingdom of darkness because I had nothing to do with them. I had nothing to do with them. Separate the sheep from the goat. Let us see that you are a sheep. And let us see that you are a goat. Let us see that you are a genuine man of God. And let us see that you are a false prophet. Because you know the false prophets are in. For signs and wonders and miracles. That doesn't mean God cannot use a genuine prophet or a genuine man of God to do miracles. No. God can use a genuine man of God, a genuine man of God to perform any miracle. Peter. Peter was just passing. And people were getting healing. Apostle Paul, his, his handkerchief, it fell on a dead person and he resurrected. Why? Because the word of God carries power. And it heals. Not about this uh, 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 acrobatic and uh, dramatic uh, displayers. Those acrobatics. I'm not talking about those prophets too. Because any prophet that is a genuine prophet will let the people of God hear the word of God. Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah, if this prophet were sent by me, they will let my people hear my words. No, I see, I see. I told you all this, I see, I see. It's an agenda 52. That agenda 52 is to extort. The Sunamite woman, every day they will quote it. And the prophet said, what do you have? Run away as soon as you hear this word. And the prophet said, what do you have? 
And the prophet told the woman, what do you have? Run away. As soon as you hear this word, run away. Because your money in your account, you will take it and give to them. You will not get any blessing after it. Prosperity messages are to prosper. To prosper the thieves, not the church members. Let me tell you the truth. Prosperity gospel is to prosper the head, the papajios, mamajios, not the church members. That is why a lot of you. I said 366 days. They preach prosperity, but money to pay your rent is difficult. 368 days prosperity. God is dead. God has opened heavens. God has opened doors. God has done this. God has done that. God is saying it is done. But money to pay your children's school fees is difficult. Prosperity gospel is not to prosper you. So if I'm you, I will fight prosperity gospels in my church. If I am you, I will fight against prosperity gospel. Because that's, that gospel will never prosper you. It will prosper the man of God. As it will prosper the woman of God. As she start declaring, and the Sunamite woman, the prophet asked the woman, what do you have? The remaining is you, the poor person, giving the little you have to the one that already have. Sunamite woman. You are not the Sunamite woman. Stop being deceived. Stop being ignorant. And this is the doctrine that genuine men of God today as they are stealing from the occultic jackals. They are stealing this doctrine from the jackals. They are stealing this doctrine from the thieves and robbers. Criminals. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? A lot of you, you fear for me. I called a young man and I told him, can you be my Bible reader? He said, Mama, what God has called you to do? I don't have the strength. I wish I can read for you, but I don't have the energy. I cannot stand I can't stand. If I see the, how they have been tearing you, trying to kill you, mama, I cannot stand. That is why I don't have Bible reader. Anybody that I will call, they will tell me, mama, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm afraid. They, they fear. They fear because when you speak the truth, they want to kill you. When you speak the truth, they want to hunt you down. When you speak the truth, they want to destroy you. The Lord gave me a message to give to Lucy Natasha, I think two years ago. And this woman has been trying always and means just to make sure I don't exist. Let me tell you, you can fight, but you cannot win God. You can't win God. When God says repent, when God wants you, he knows the reason why he's warning you. If God do not love you, he will never rebuke you. If God do not love you, he will never chastise you. He rebukes those that he loves. So if God he, if he rebukes you, it's a sign that God loves you. It's a sign he loves you. Don't fight against the messenger. You managed for them to terminate my page. They deleted everything. I started again. See, I'm still preaching. I will tell the truth no matter what. It doesn't matter what it will cost me. Even if, you if it will cost my last breath, I will do it and die. I will tell the truth and die. When God told Ezekiel, called Ezekiel, when I read the scripture, Ezekiel chapter 2, Ezekiel chapter 2, the first number, 4 to 6, or 4 to 7, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 4 to 7, he said, they are stubborn and do not respect me, so I'm sending you to tell them what 
I, the sovereign Lord, am saying to them, He said, whether these people listen to you or not, they will not know, they will know that a prophet has been among them. Whether they listen to you, whether they hear your words or not, they will know that I sent the messenger to them. You've been fighting me. Jeremiah Omoto being your spiritual father on the other side has been fighting me because I, I gave a message about her spiritual daughter. Oh yes. It is not me that you are fighting. For me, I'm a little aunt. In the sight of God, I'm a little aunt. If John the Baptist was a smaller, me, I'm like an aunt. I'm not, it's not me that you are fighting. It is the God that sent me to you to repent that you are fighting. God told Ezekiel, he said, but you mortal man must not be afraid of them or of anything they say. They will defy and despise you. It will be like living among scorpions. So don't be afraid of the rebels or of anything they say. You will tell them whatever I tell you to say, whether they listen or not. Remember what rebels they are. Whether they listen or not, they will know that a messenger with a message. Lucy Natasha cannot tell me she doesn't know me in the realm of the spirit. She cannot tell me she has not been fighting me. She cannot tell me she has not been seeing me in dreams. She cannot deny it. She cannot tell me. Jeremiah Omoto, uh, Nigeria, cannot tell me. He can't stand before the Almighty God and tell that he's not fighting me. They can't. Because the message that God will give for you to give to them, instead of them receiving the message, assessing the message, comparing it to their life, mending their little mistakes that they are making, that God wants them to stop, they intend to fight you. That is what truth is missing. Genuine men of God fear to tell them that you jackals, false prophets, charlatans, kingdom of God is coming. And the judgment of God is upon you. So repent. It's difficult. Even if they live around you, it's difficult for you to rebuke them. Because physically they will send their forces. Physically they will send their police. Sometimes they send people to come to my house. I'll be sleeping outside and I'll hear somebody say, I'm looking for the prophetess. And they'll call me, the, I'm looking for the lioness. I'm looking for the lioness. And my mother will say, uh, okay, uh, is there any problem? Or my PA will just uh, say, oh, is there any problem? Oh, I just want to see her. What do you want to see me for? Who sent you? Who sent you? Who sent you? What do you want to see me for? Me? You can kill me. You can kill me. You can send the police. You can send the military. You can do whatever you want to do, but remember, my blood will be requested from your hands and the hands of your family members. My blood, my blood, it will cry more than the blood of Abel. My blood, because I'm a servant that is called to tell the truth at this end time. Repent. And you that is here, that loves miracle more than any other thing. You lost miracle. You want miracle. You want miracle. Oh Lord, please show me signs and wonders through this woman of God. The devil will show you signs and wonders. During the time of Jesus, the sinners went to Jesus. People that do not want to repent. People that cannot stop sinning. People that are addicted to sin. People that call evil good and call good evil. They visited Jesus and said, We want signs and wonders. Can you show us some sign? And Jesus told them, the only sign that I can show you is the sign of... <laughs> the only sign you will get is the sign of Jonah, where you'll be in that fish belly for three days. That is the only sign. Repent. Seek God. Know God yourself. Stop following miracles. Stop following signs and wonders. If you cringe yourself, signs will follow you. If you want miracle, miracle, 
Me, the only miracle that I call it a miracle is when a drug addict laid down everything and is on the street preaching the gospel. The only miracle that I know is the true miracle is when a prostitute lifts the hand and say, I surrender to Jesus. I lay down everything. I will not enter into prostitution again. The only miracle that I'm waiting to testify is when I see a drug addict, somebody that is addicted to alcohol, a drunkard that have come to Christ. When I see a murderer, an armed robber that holds guns to break into people's homes, break into people's cars, a serial killer that takes money to go and kill innocent people, Standing in the public, confessing their sins and crying for God to show them mercy. This is the miracle I want to see in our dispensation. This is what is miraculous. A barren woman carrying baby. It is no longer a miracle. Because God has given doctors wisdom and knowledge. To take the semen of a man, push it through a woman, through IVF, and the baby is formed. It's no longer a miracle again. It's no longer a miracle. Many of the ladies that will give birth at 40, they were waiting mothers. Some of these women, is because you don't understand seasons. Sometimes, most of you, you are destined to carry a testimony that you'll be sharing to encourage women. You are a waiting woman. You are not a barren woman. A waiting woman is the one that will marry for 12 years, 25 years, 30 years, no child. After 32 years, they will conceive triplets, quadruplets. You are a waiting mother. Your name was on the waiting list. Hannah was the waiting mother. Sarah was the waiting woman. Elizabeth wasn't a barren woman. She's a waiting mother. In the sight of man, they saw them barren. But in the sight of God, they were waiting for God's own time. Because God was preparing a, a, a king, a judge. A judge, somebody that would clear the way of God. A voice. John the Baptist. You cannot give birth to a, 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 a judge. A, 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 somebody with a message just like that too. there must be a story there must be a mystery behind your birth that is why we have a mystery behind the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ we have a mystery behind the death of Samson there is a mystery you are a waiting mother Samson's mother was a waiting mother because she was going to born a savior that will save the people of Israel from the hand of the Philistines it's because you don't understand God and so let them use this thing to deceive you as miracles. They deceive you. These charlatans will go and, and pay somebody. Over here in Kumasi, they arrested a the woman. She's not far away from where I stay. The same area. They arrested her because she has a very big house. And she has held the ladies, young, young, young ladies. Some of them are sick. Some of them are naturally sick. And this your false prophet will go and pay money to that woman. And say, this person is suffering from HIV AIDS. They have taken their money. So whatever you tell them to act, they will act. HIV AIDS. So when they get home, they give them some supplement. So you see them increasing after the two weeks. Or next week. You see the after picture, before picture. And after picture, and you call this miracle. You call this miracle. Some of them will go to the market, buy beef with broad inside. And come to this area, those places, they have women that train such people for such acts. Because they are also actors and actresses in their ways. They will tie that meat, flesh meat, with broad inside. Or somebody that has Involved in a fatal accident that have big wound in front of their leg. So they'll put this flesh meat. When they put their flesh meat with blood inside, they'll put camera on it. And they'll take before. This is how the wound was. After two weeks of deliverance, after two weeks of the man laying hands on him, they will bring the actor 
and the answer is the old wound that has been dead through the accident the person got 15 years ago and they will take their money and go and you gullible members will start believing this sowing into it thinking that man of God has something that bursts fibroid they don't have anything they are just deceiving they are just in to deceive people because they are meant to come they are meant to come false prophets can never stop working so it is up to you that is a genuine woman of God genuine man of God it is up to you that is a kingdom citizen a daughter of Christ a daughter of Zion to differentiate test all spirits to know which of them is of God and which of them is not of God test the spirit oh yes Revelation chapter 16 verse 13 let me read the scripture to you write it at the back of your cord Revelation chapter 16 verse 13 it said then I saw three on green spirit it was when the, the, the bull that has the anchor of God inside when they pour the bowl, something will happen. Because of our time, you can read from uh, Revelation 16. You get the whole story. Revelation 16, verse 30. He said, Then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs. They were coming out of the mouth of the dragon. The mouth of the dragon. Which of the nations have a dragon as their symbol? Which of the nations have dragon as their symbol? The, 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 the false prophet, the evil spirit, came out of the mouth of the dragon. On Christ's spirit, there were three. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast. Revelation 13, that beast that will come, <laughs> that beast that will come to give people marks. They say, 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 that beast. The mouth of the beast, the mouth of the dragon. That means dragon. <laughs> the nation that have dragon as their symbol is Italy, Rome. And that is why we have the Pope. So the Pope will throw their power to the one that is coming. When we talk about the beast coming, it's not an animal. It's a human being that do not have compassion. A human being with an animal heart. A human that do not care. Killing the whole nation. Human being that can decide and say today, I want to finish Ghana. I want to kill everybody in Ghana. And they will arrange bombs and machines and weapons that will scatter the whole nation. The Roman Empire representing the dragon. The Pope with his power, his authority, he will give it to whosoever that will come and sit on that seat. Oh yes. That is the one world order that you hear underground. It is coming. Whether you like it or not. Say, 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 it's with us. Say, 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 it is with us. It has started working. All what you are seeing, it is working. If you don't take this, you can't go here. It is working. You can't do anything about it. No man born of a woman can stop it. Just live for God. So that God will show you mercy. God will know how he will take those that are hate from it. It is not you that says, I will not take it. I reject it. It's by your lips. If God do not support you, you cannot do it. Peter. Jesus Christ told Peter, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gate of hell cannot prevail. But when Peter saw the slap they gave to Jesus, Peter lifted the hand and said, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Don't count me among his disciples. But when Peter received the Holy Spirit, they arrested him. They persecuted him. They did a lot of things to Peter. Peter never denied God. You need the Holy Spirit. Else, whatever that is coming, you cannot escape. I read then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs that were coming out of the beast 
the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. They are the spirit of demons that perform miracles. These three spirits go out to all the kings of the world to bring them together for the battle of the great day of the almighty God. Let me confirm something. You see, there are some nations that are joined together to create their currency. And it's a currency that we are going to eat it world world. It's a biblical thing that is fulfilling. But many Christians don't know because you don't read the Bible. I repeat the message that I'm reading today. Compare it to what is happening and know the error that we are in. He said they are the spirit of demon that perform miracles. These three spirits go out to all the kings of the world to bring them together for the battle of the great day of the almighty God. The great day of the almighty God. They join together. They are, they are parling together. <laughs> They are, they, are, they are speaking underground. They are making underground meet, meetings. They are making underground groups, group by group. And it's going to the day they will expose it. There is nothing anybody can do. I see the false prophet, they can't hide again. They cannot hide because the frog spirit in you cannot let you hide. You come and display. You come and you come here and display and, and disgrace yourself. You come and display and disgrace yourself. So if you are here and you are interested in, I want miracle. Lord, give me miracle. Looking for places that you are performing miracle. The day that you visit me in Ghana, I will go and show you places that I myself have been there before. <laughs> Where? Uh, um, the, the, the Roman Catholic Century. Where every year they carry Mary. This year they carry Mary. Mary was angry. Mary never showed any sign in the sky. When they tell you, say that I'm the one that said it. Because I went there. That is why I posted the video. When I was going, my car was, the car that I was seeing was to take a U-turn. So they went before me. I took a video. It was on my page. We went there this time around. My mother Mary was angry because mother Mary was supposed to be carried on Friday or, or Wednesday. That was 4th. And the people said it's a busy day. People are going to work. They cannot block the road. Because when they call him Mother Mary, Mother Mary, when they call him Mother Mary, the way will block. Nobody can go. So they, they extended it to Saturday. I went there. Mother Mary never showed. Mother Mary no show any sign in the sky. Because previously, when we were young, I started going there from the day I was young. It is close to where we live. When you're standing on top of my house, you see it. When you stand there, you see the, the, the mountain. You see all the ticks and the trees and everything. You see it there. It's not far away. The day you visit me in my house, I will walk with you. We can walk. We walk from here to go there. When they tell him, Madame Mary, you see signs in the atmosphere. You see Jesus and the disciples in the sky. Red, 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 my own eyes. You see miracles. You see signs and wonders. You see different, different things. In the sky, this time around, Mother Mary is angry. Mother Mary no show any sign in the sky. Those of you that need miracle, you find yourself in hellfire. Those of you that is chasing miracle, oh, I see miracle here, I see miracle, they chase the truth, chase righteousness, chase holiness, chase Jesus Christ and his word. Obey the Lord your God, his command that he has given to you, and you will live. You will enjoy everything that God has destined you to enjoy. Nobody can take what belongs to you. Stop pursuing miracles. You cannot tell me it is Jesus that hangs in the sky. Me, I don't think it's Jesus. Because me, myself, I've seen Jesus in that place. During when they carry Mary, I don't know how you call it. I don't know the terms. Me, I know that they carry Mary. They carry an image. And a lot of people be carrying, that is how I say they carry Mother Mary. That is how I know and how I describe it. When you go there, you see signs. You see Jesus will come and hang in the sky. The sky will open. Jesus will come and hang. Rare, rare eyes. So I'm not telling dream. I'm not telling something that somebody has said. Me has said. Ask yourself all these signs in the sky. 
Is it from Jesus Christ? Is it from the Spirit of God? Or from a familiar spirit? Remember, the word I read, it said, Then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs that were coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. They are the spirit of demons that perform miracles. They are the spirit of demons that perform miracles. I'm not against anybody. But Roman Catholic is not Christ-centered church. Because when you read from Genesis to Revelation, where in the Bible can you quote for me? That the Bible says when you are praying, put your hand here. Put it here. Put it here. Put it here. Can you quote it for me? I'm not telling you. I'm not taking you to anything, any doctrine they've adopted. Kissing the cross. Going to lick on the cross. When we were young, that is what our mothers took us to go and do. When, when they are carrying it like this, we go and lick the cross. And you see more than thousand people, different saliva. That is why a lot of us, you grow, and our mind is having different intentions. You go and lick. Like this, so this is the cross. Assuming this is the cross. I'll come and lick it. And somebody will come and lick it. Nobody is cleaning it all. That is what they do. They cannot tell me they don't do that. Over here in Ghana. They cannot tell me. It is nowadays that most of us are preaching against that doctrine that they stop. It is now that they have stopped. You go and kiss the cross. And you lick the cross. All children will go and lick it. You go and lick it. Roman Catholic. I've, I've attended Roman Catholic. I've attended Pentecost. Church of Pentecost. I've been nurtured in the Church of Methodists. I know whatever I'm talking about. It's not a lie. All these doctrines are not biblical doctrines. That is why these three frogs, these three unclean spirits, one is coming out of the mouth of the Roman Pope, the dragon. I'm not the one that wrote it though. If you want to see anybody, if you want to see the one that wrote it, they've just written it and I'm explaining to you. Go and see John Revelator. Go and look for him wherever he is in, the, in, in, in paradise. Go and see him. Dragon, Roman Empire, symbol is dragon, according to history that we have learned. So if the Bible is saying, this prince, one prince forward, one is coming from the mouth of the dragon, who is the dragon? Pope, the head of the Roman Empire. It's an unclean spirit. It's the book. It's the Bible. I'm not the one that is saying it. So those that love Mother Mary, that love bowing down to him, don't come and fight me. Don't come and attack me. Don't come and curse me. I'm not the one that wrote it. It is revelation. Run away from churches that will not give you eternal life. Churches that will not lead you to heaven. Churches that are empty wells. Roman Catholic is an empty well. Jehovah Witness is an empty well. Later Day Saints is an empty well. No water inside. Those churches cannot give you eternal life. Jehovah Witness, they shouldn't come and fight me. Don't come and fight me. Don't fight me. Because your doctrine is not Christ-centered doctrine. And any doctrine... That is a different doctrine from the one Jesus Christ has given to us. It's the doctrine of the mammon. Doctrine of, of, of the Antichrist. It's not a good doctrine. So if you are a member of such churches, pray to God to direct you. If God tells you that church can lead you to eternal life, go. If God tells you that church cannot lead you, walk out of that church. It's better you be in the house. Read the word of God. Pray for God to draw closer to you. Pray for God to show you the way. It's better. Rather than being in ghost churches. Some churches are ghost churches. Ghost. Ghost churches. Run away from ghost churches. As I bring my message to an end. I want to conclude by telling you. Any church that do not preach salvation. Run away from those churches. Any church that is not preparing you for rapture. Because very soon rapture can take place. 
Very soon, rapture can take place. Any church that is not preparing you for rapture, run away from those churches. Any church that is not preparing your soul for eternity, run away from those churches. Because whatever that those churches will preach for you to get money, children, babies, husband, get visa, get drink card, you will die and live it here. It is three things. You will not go with it. I've seen a woman that was crying for the fruit of the womb. 25 years in marriage. She got, she got a child. And within the space of five years, she had four children. She died one day and never went with any of the children. I've seen a man that was crying to God to bless him. And God opened financial door unto him. He died and he never went with one of the money. I've seen a man in history, in my city here, a man that was so wealthy, he was so loaded. He was the one that pays electricity bill for all the people in this city that I'm based here in Kumase. Anytime you come in history, in Kumase, ask about Adair Katras. They will tell you the history of that man. The man that sits on gold. The man that pray with gold. The man that gives him gold. The man that paid the whole city, the whole town, the electricity bills. He died and never went with gold. You that sit on wooden stake, wooden stool, wooden chair, wooden sofa. The one that sit on gold never went with any of the gold. You that sit. You that sit on ordinary, <laughs> how do you say, ceramic. You think you go with it. I said any church. That is not leading you to eternity. Run away. You get hurt because telling you the truth will hurt you. Me, you following me or you not following me, it doesn't change anything in the message I will deliver. Whether you like me or you don't like me, whether you feed me or you don't feed me, when I wake up, it's almost 12. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I can sleep the whole day and sleep the next day without food. You are not what you like is what I will tell you. What God wants you to hear. The bitter truth is what I will tell you. Where in the Bible did you see people licking cross? Where in the Bible did you see people bowing down to, uh, to, to cows? Where in the Bible did you see people taking their children to go and kiss the mouth of a cow? To go and kiss a cross? Where is it written in the Bible? Because I tell you the truth, I'm your enemy now. Thank you. You are welcome to the enemy's group. I welcome you. Stay blessed. Stay connected. I tell you the truth. Woe unto me if I lie to you for your soul to perish. Woe unto me. You did not log in by mistake. You did not log in today by mistake. It's not that you are passing by. No. God wants you to hear the truth. That is how you log in. You did not log in by mistake. God wants you to hear the truth. You have, we have embraced demonic doctrine. And we have polished it as if it's a godly doctrine. It's not godly doctrine. It's not the doctrine of Christ. Some have embraced the doctrine of mammon. Mammon. Some have embraced... Different doctrine that is not be breaker. Any doctrine that is not be breaker is against the doctrine of Christ. And any doctrine that you pay heed to that is not the doctrine of Christ will lead you to hell. I must warn you. Jesus said, even if angels come down from heaven to earth to teach you different things, apart from what he has given to us, you should not believe. We shouldn't believe. Stop buying to a lot of things. Stop availing a lot of deceit in your life. Stop paying heed to a lot of things. It's because you don't have the discernment spot. Sisters and brothers, if you have the discernment spot, whatever somebody is doing, your discernment spot will start. It, it will start. It will question that word. Any word that I speak to, the discernment spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in you will lead you. 
You go home and you question yourself. You go home and you start asking a lot of questions. And you start doing research. How they came about to that doctrine. Because if in time and seasons, it was changed by Constantine. Roman Empire. They came to change time and season. So it's not doctrine that they cannot change. They can change everything. They can change everything. Draw closer to God. As I bring my message to an end, please, make sure your name is written in the book of life. Don't be an ordinary church goer. Don't waste your time on earth without knowing God. Know God. Stop sinning. Live according to the word of God. Whatever God has called you to do, do it all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind. May the Lord bless you. My name is Prophetess Gifty Apia, the Lioness. Love you all. Shalom.